Hi everyone, George here from Locked On Art, and welcome to part 2 of my Sherman Calliope full build. In this video, I'll be concentrating mainly on the T-34 rocket system, but before I get started on that, there's just a few more details I'd like to add to the Sherman tank itself. So we'll get started on those first. I'm just going to make a couple of MG clips for the back of the turret, just using this strip of brass that I've cut off. Now this will be the housing bracket for the MG clip. Just adding in a bracket for where the searchlight would fit in. Now on the light brush guards on this inside beam was mounted a tube that housed a plug for the light fitting when the lights were not in use. It had a wee cap on the end which was attached to the tube via a small chain. So I'll just be making those up from scratch and adding those on. going to be using these as the tubes. I've made a couple of lids and I'm using a piece of twisted wire for the small chain. Now in regards to the casting and foundry markings on the tank, there is a decent amount, but the one area where it is lacking any sort of marking is the turret. So what I've done is I've ordered these resin casting marks from Archer Fine Transfers. So they're raised off the sheet, which gives them a wee 3D effect. They just go into the tank like normal water slide decals. And then same as I normally would, I use a bit of micro set just to help it conform to the model. So I've added the foundry marking here for general steel. And also the turret number, D78461. And underneath that is the serial number. And I've also replaced the C on the transmission cover, just because the other one looked a bit warped. So now it's time to tackle the rocket launcher system itself. I'm just going to take everything off the sprue and see what I can use and what I need to throw away. So 
So what I've decided to do is to keep all of the framing and the support arms. I'll be completely scratch building the tubes and the straps for those as well as all of the wiring that goes into it. There's a few alterations I need to make to the framing. I'll be removing that uh, moulded in cable and also sealing up the seam here. So now I need to add these springs to the main arms. They are very poorly molded, so I'm just going to be scratch building the whole component. I'm just going to be using these brass rods, and I have a plastic tube which will be inserted over the top there, and then I can wrap the spring around this tube here. And I'll use the sweet end piece just to finish it off so it fits into the arm Just using a copper wire that's 0.4 millimeters in diameter. Just bought this spool from my local electronics shop. The elevation arm here 
uh, after doing a wee bit of research is way out of proportions so I'm going to be scratch building one also adding in the jettison mechanism which seems to be non-existent on this one Just made some springs for the front of the mechanism in the same fashion that I made the last springs. Okay, so I've got the elevation arm to pretty much how I want. So what I need to do now is there was two cables that came from each side of the release mechanism. They came up and about halfway up the arm there was a exactor receiver that those cables fed into and then it went from there into the tank. So I've gone ahead and made the exactor receiver and I'll just be placing it about there. So I'm installing the cable here been threaded through the two end pieces and it will connect up into there but the two cables did meet up before they went into the receiver so I've added a wee connector here both wires will be fed into that and then a single wire would come out into the receiver What I want to be able to do is to take these lugs off here and attach them directly to the turret. Then I'll be able to put a brass rod into the arm here and then I can remove the whole system just to make it easier for fitting and painting and stuff like that. Okay, so I've just installed the brass rods into the arm supports and I've just used a bit of white plastic card just to fill in the gaps where I've cut. I have the lugs that will be attached to the tank. I've got a hole in them for the brass rod. The elevation arm was attached to the tank via a split ring that was fitted over the barrel and tightened. The tank crews found the problem with this was that the 75mm cannon could not be fired with it attached. 
one modification they came up with, and was widely used, was to weld a steel plate shelf on top of the mantlet lugs, then attach the ring to that, allowing the gun to be fired and recoil while the rocket launcher was still attached. I've just added a small base to the split ring where it would have been bolted together. Now for the rocket launch tubes, I'm going to be using this aluminium tube. It's about 5mm in diameter. And I've made a wee jig for my mitre saw. And it's set to 65 centimeters, So that way every tube comes out exactly the same. I should also mention that the blade is a specialised aluminium blade. Just with a nor normal saw blade, it would just rip and twist the metal. So the rocket pods were actually strapped into groups of four. The top and the bottom ones were touching. And then to hold the whole system in place, there was a bolt that went through the middle, tightening the straps. So I'll be able to glue the top and bottom ones together. And then I'll be able to put that bolt through the middle and glue that all in place. And then I can add the straps. Now I've stuck them all down on a piece of masking tape. Just to make working with it a lot easier. They're all in a line and it keeps it nice and straight. So I'll be marking down where the straps are going and where the bolts are going. I'm just going to glue every second tube together and then I'll be able to add the bolt. So I only need to glue the bolt down to half of the tubes. So what I thought I'd do is I'd glue it down in one piece. Then it's just a lot easier than having to glue down the individual bolts. And once that's done, I'll be able to cut the individual sections off.
So now I have the tubes all trimmed up, the top halves and the bottom halves. Now they need to be stuck together. So I've made this handy wee device. It keeps the bottom and the top half straight when I glue them together. Just put the top half on and they're nicely lined up. I've got a nice even spacing in between. So now I have them all grouped into four. There's 15 groups there. So what I need to do now is to add the steel straps. And what I'm going to use is uh, some brass sheet. It's almost like paper, it's super thin. I'm just going to cut that to one and a half millimeters wide. So I'm just going to start off with the bolters, just glue it into position. And the other side with the bolters, it's going to be pressed into there. Now all the straps are complete, I'll be gluing them into three groups. One group of nine, which goes on top, and two groups of three for the bottom. Just completing the detailing here on the straps by adding a nut which will secure the bolt. Now for the rocket release assembly, I'm going to be using these existing parts and just modifying them slightly and I will be making the contact arms from scratch.
So this here is the release assembly for the rocket and either side of that are the bases for the contact arms. So that's the majority of the work done now for the rocket launchers. Now they just need to be installed onto the frame. And as you can see they fit perfectly into the frame. So I'm really happy with those, really pleased. They turned out exactly how I'd hoped. And with that, this is where I will conclude part two of the build. In part three, I will be filling the tubes with scratch built rockets, finishing off all of the wiring and the cable systems, and completing the tank with some extra stowage and bits and pieces. So please subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss part three. And until next time, thanks very much for watching.